we're going to talk about this hate crime that took place in Jacksonville, Florida at a Dollar General where a white gunman and I and I hate saying his name. I hate saying his name, but it's important, right? Because I, I'm, I'm a I'm a non-traditional journalist, so I have to do some journalistic types of things, which is identifying who this killer is. Ryan Christopher Paul Metter, 21, who shot and killed three, three black folk at a Jacksonville Dollar General. Fam. And even just even in, in and I'm just coming off the heels of full transparency of a conversation for the next hashtag you good man where I'm talking about death, dying and grieving. And so to come off the heels of a conversation of death, dying and grieving to now have a conversation about three black folk who were killed at a Dollar General just three days ago by a white supremacist, white nationalist. We use this term interchangeably. Somebody undoubtedly with untreated mental health issues is hard. It's hard because where we are in society today, this is happening every day. Somebody is dying at the hands of another literally every day. A little bit later, I'm going to talk about, I'm going to offer the statistics that came from the FBI when it comes to the increase in hate crimes and which demographic is most impacted. Spoiler alert is Negroes. Spoiler alert, it's Negroes. Again, I say spoiler alert, it is Negroes. It is black folk. But black, back to this murder. So details have emerged regarding the killer. He had a manifesto where he supposedly spoke about his hatred for black people along with other groups, along racial lines. He talked about his hatred of liberals. He talked about a hatred for apparently conservatives. How do we know this? 45 minutes after this attack where he shot this black woman sitting in her car who was an Uber driver, shot her 10 to 12 times, killing her, then going into the Dollar General where he kills an employee and then kills somebody just walking into the store before turning the gun on himself. We know this because his father contacted the police. 45 minutes too late, days too late, probably years too late. But 45 minutes after the shootings to inform them of what was written in his son's journal, which was homicidal and suicidal in nature. He informed him that his son hadn't been taking a psychiatric medication. Before offering my thoughts, I want to say rest in peace to Angela Michelle Carr, 52, who was that Uber driver. Anult Joseph LaGuerre Jr., known as AJ, 29, who worked at the store. Gerald Deshaun Gallion, 19. I want to send love and light to not only these now ancestors, but to their family, to their friends, to their community, to humanity. Cause see, when you kill folk, not only when folk die, it's not, a, it's not just the loss of an individual. A family feels that, a community feels that, a society feels that, if you're doing this right. Again, if you're doing this right. And so I feel these losses. These, all, these losses not only inspire me to continue the work that I, that I think that I'm doing, which is healing work, 
and having folk think critically. But it, it, it encourages me to continue to put community first because I do believe that the next coming isn't this rugged individualism that we've become accustomed to, but the next coming is community. On to my thoughts. So apparently this white supremacist, and this is how I'm, I'm going to refer to him. I'm not saying his name anymore. Apparently this white supremacist has a history of psychiatric issues where he was placed on a 72 hour hold in his teenage years due to suicidality. Clearly his father is aware of this and this is where I hold his father accountable. Now your son and, and part of the conversation when it comes to this, to this entire situation and how it's being spun in certain places is that this white supremacist, this white nationalist worked at a dollar store. And so he had traveled to other dollar stores in one place that he traveled, he was confronted by security. So he sped off and found himself at another dollar store, which happened to be this dollar general that are trying to paint the picture. Like there's this animus resulting from his time in and working at this dollar store. And part of that may be true, but we know this racial hate that's also that's in his manifesto, which caused him to drive to a predominantly black community and let off shots. We know that that's a driving force also. And so when I say his father was 45 minutes too late, hours too late, days too late, months too late, years too late, after his son dropped out of college and didn't leave the bedroom for days on end, there was something taking place his wellness was being neglected. Now, if he would have, if, if he would have engaged his son, he potentially would have, the lives of, of Angela and AJ and Gerald might have been saved because he might have had some awareness of what his son was thinking, how he was feeling. See, as a parent, sometimes you have to go above and beyond. Yes, you do have inf have to infringe upon the personal space. I talk all the time about my, my daughter is her own individual, soon to be 15 year old. And I wanna give her this opportunity to live her life on her terms. It's my, it's my responsibility to guide. But as a, as, a, as a person who's also a part of a community in society at large, I have a responsibility to make sure that she doesn't cause harm to others. And so if that means going into her bedroom, if I do have some, some real concerns, if I'm concerned about just her well-being, then that's what I need to do. But I also understand as a parent, sometimes we don't know what to do. Sometimes it's just like, okay, you know what? Maybe they'll, they'll grow out of it. We tend to do that with men, boys and men who experience mental health issues. It's like, and just individuals in general, you know what? They'll grow out of it. This might just be a period, it's just some downtime especially the generations that we're in now, it's not uncommon to have boys, to have men stay in their rooms, to have children, to have adults stay in their rooms for hours on end, whether they're playing video games, whether they're on social media. But there's a disconnect that exists. And this disconnect caused three innocent people their lives. 
when I saw that this happened in Jacksonville, specific in in Florida, but specifically in Jacksonville, who has a who has a prominent history of of racial animus, of racial divide. I wasn't shocked. In fact, and I want to be wrong about this. I think in the days and the months and the years to come, we're going to see more race-based crimes where white supremacists slash white nationalists are taking out their anger, their frustration, their incompetence, exhibiting their lack of humanity. They're going to be taking that out against persons of the global majority. And so when I say persons of the global majority, we know that when, yeah, America will will be the majority, and I hate the term majority, minority, but we know the majority will be non-white individuals in another another 20 to 30 years. But if we look across the globe, we know that white folk aren't the majority. Hence the reason that we use the term persons of the global majority. But I foresee this taking place because what's happening in places like Florida, same thing with places like Texas, where we saw another race-based crime take place last year. What's happening? They're doing away with, with curriculum. They're bringing in this, this, this antebellum, this, this white nationalist uh, perspective to education, which doesn't necessarily harm persons of the global majority if we're doing it right. Asians, whether they're going to school or not, they're going to know about their, their, their history, about their culture. Now, black folk, if we're doing it right, we don't necessarily need the schools to, to educate on who we are because we have knowledge of self. Again, if we're doing it right. Who suffers or whom? Individuals like this white supremacist slash white nationalist. Kids who are growing up who only have to identify Rosa Parks by picture. They don't have to know what Rosa Parks did. They don't, re- they don't get the privilege of being able to read Bell Hooks and, and Toni Morrison, Kaisi Lehman, and so many other dope black authors. They don't get to learn about their own history in a way that's fully transparent. And so what'll happen? Like in the movie Higher Learning, when Remy sacrifices life for what? For the cause. It's just like, oh man, Remy's dead. And he's just like, no, you know what that is? White freaking power. And that's what is probably being looked at by other white nationalists. He sacrificed himself, himself for the greater cause. This domestic terrorist. I haven't seen that language used. I haven't seen it used in the New York Times. I haven't seen that language used in C- on CNN. I haven't seen domestic terrorists used. But we're quick to use that when it's non-white folk. Right? They're terrorizing the city. This white supremacist terrorized not only these three black folk, but the black community and all of humanity. What's funny, and I don't even necessarily know if it's funny, right? But I, I got a chuckle out of it. I saw Ron DeSantis. I saw him have something to say. He was initially booed when he showed up unexpectedly. But like good city council people do, no, no, let's, let's give him an opportunity to speak. Why? Why does he deserve an opportunity to speak? Why should we have to hear from a white, another white supremacist, white nationalist who's carrying out the same agenda 
as this 21 year old who's creating an environment that's ripe for the breeding of this type of mentality, this type of mindset. But this is what they do. They don't deserve the platform. He didn't deserve this platform. But he came out and said, this shouldn't have taken place. Right? This is unacceptable. Again, all I could do is chuckle. Because it's contradictory to the very actions that are taking place within the very state that he governs. The unfortunate part when it comes to this situation outside of the lives that are lost is that the very real mental health issues that exist in this situation that could potentially play a role in this taking place. See, this is psychopathic slash sociopathic behavior. This is antisocial personality disorder. Now, I'm not sitting here diagnosing them, but this is a very real thing. We see this in serial killers. We see these characteristics. But what it will cause is it will cause folk to, to turn on mental health. Why? Because it's not necessarily used in every situation. Across racial and ethnic lines. I just saw here today in Philadelphia. Kim, I believe his name is Kim Brady Carricker. Uh, character, character, I believe his name is. Con carried out a mass shooting, a black individual, because I don't know their, their gender identity. Carried out a mass shooting a few months ago. And he was deemed, they were deemed, excuse me, incompetent to stand trial. Because yes, from my perspective, as a clinician, from my perspective, as somebody who's, who's been reading the research, to engage in this, this type of antisocial behavior, this wasn't necessarily just a loss of impulse. This is something that has been stewing, something that has been brewing for a very long time. And so this individual could have faced that same fate. But what will happen is, and I'm shocked. I'm shocked that they that he was deemed them they were deemed, excuse me, incompetent to stand trial. Because that's not usually how it goes, especially for black folk who come in contact with the legal system. Now what also, and and I don't advocate for or against the legal system in in, in this regard, I don't make their case. For them, but I can very well see a defense attorney saying this individual is legally insane. In Kim, in Kim Brady's case, and no different than this this twenty one year old white supremacist case, this isn't something that just pops up one day. For Kim Brady, individuals who knew them saw the diminished capacity that was taking place over the past few weeks which manifested in them terrorizing the Southwest Philadelphia area. Same thing here. They didn't just, this individual, this white supremacist didn't just start writing this manifesto last night. This was something that was brewing. Just the hate, the pain, the loss of touch of reality. And so I guess what I'm saying is two things can be true. This can be a hate crime. This is anti-blackness in its purest form. But it also can be a mental health issue attached to it. I 
I just don't, I just don't see this changing. As I said earlier, Rich says he is just trying to boost his chances with anybody for their vote. He doesn't give a damn about any of it. He can shove it. And he's speaking about Ron DeSantis, who struggles with smiling. Can't create a smile. Can't fake a smile. Which, again, may be some underlying mental health issues that are taking place. But as long as there's access to guns, with this individual having an AK-47 and having a handgun, as long as there, it's just wanton thinking and behaviors when it comes to, to gun control and legislation, even though I think we're too far gone, because the guns that exist in the 1700s and the 1800s, they still can kill you. So, so these guns are out here. They're not being melted down. But maybe this individual wouldn't have been able to, to acquire one if the legislation was in place to thwart an individual who's had a mental health stay. If his dad had made that call and said, hey, my son needs an evaluation. He needs to be inpatient for maybe a long period of time. Then maybe these three lives would still be present. So again, sending a a rest in peace to in, in, in love and light to these individuals. Angela Michelle Carr. Anault Joseph LaGuerre Jr., known as AJ. Gerald Deshaun Gallion, 19. <sighs> I can only see it getting worse. And I know I and when and I know I said that it has gotten worse when we talk about an increase in hate crimes. According to the to the FBI. Hate crimes have increased by more than 11% since 2020, since the George Floyd uprising, which was also a hate crime. With anti-black hate crimes making up a large bias incident category with 31% of all single bias incidents in 2021. Which means that black folk are feeling the brunt of this. And again, I expect to see an uptick in these red states like Florida, like Texas, who are trying to take the world back to enslavement. 